the nightly business report. Good evening. Tonight, Sri Lanka tax revenues rose 41 percent to 2,348 billion rupees in the eight months to August 2024, at a rate higher than the full year 35 percent target. Cabinet says a decision to raise salaries of state workers in 2025, taken by the last cabinet, has been done without treasury observations, prompting needs for re-discussion. The instability of the Colombo bourses seen at the beginning of the week are seemingly settling, as there are some optimistic sentiments at the closing today, with both indices closing in the green. And Wall Street's major stock indexes closed lower, with a 1% drop in the technology-heavy Nasdaq leading losses as ship stocks stumbled on demand concerns. From Studio 24, here's Anuvi Mudanayaka. Good evening and thank you for joining us. Sri Lanka tax revenues rose 41 percent to 2,348 billion rupees in the eight months to August 2024, at a rate higher than that of the full year of 35 percent target. And current expenses only grew 3 percent amid higher tax rates and monetary stability. Total revenues also grew 4.1 percent to 2,557 billion rupees, with non-tax revenues rising to 209 billion rupees from 158 billion rupees last year, according to the pre-budget fiscal report. Current spending was contained at 3,041 billion rupees amid wage restraint and a lower than budgeted interest bill. Interest costs rose only 2 percent to 1,560 billion rupees, despite new debt taken to finance the budget deficit. The current account deficit fell to 483.8 billion. Rupees or 1.5 percent of GDP in the first eight months. Capital spending picked up to 435.3 billion rupees, up 22 percent. The overall deficit after grants was 911 billion rupees, down 38 percent from 1,470 billion rupees. The deficit financed by borrowings of the first eight months with our bank capitalization costs was only 2.9 percent of the GDP. Domestic borrowings were down 46 percent to 742.4 billion rupees as current spending was kept under control, while foreign borrowings picked up 80 percent to 168 billion rupees. Sri Lanka's interest payments on both foreign and domestic debt reached 1,559.7 billion rupees during the first eight months of 2024, according to the pre-election budget deficit report 2024 issued by the Ministry of Finance, Economic Development and Tourism. The report released under Section 52 of the Public Financial Management Act highlights a 2.2 percent increase in interest expenditures compared to 1,525.7 billion rupees. Recorded in the same period of 2023, foreign debt interest payments saw a significant rise of 34.9 percent, amounting to 100 billion rupees, compared to 74.1 billion rupees last year. This increase is attributed to the commencement of repayments on some bilateral loans, as outlined in the report. Meanwhile, domestic debt interest payments increased marginally by 0.6 percent, reaching 1,459.7 billion rupees, up from 1,451.6 billion rupees in the same period last year. Minister Vijitha Herath said a decision to raise salaries of state workers in 2025, taken by the last cabinet, has been taken without treasury observations, and it will have to be revisited. The last administration said salaries would be raised from January 2025 based on recommendations by committees headed by Udaya Senivratna, which also included trimming Sri Lanka's bloated public sector over time. The minister said that they found no observations were called from the finance ministry for this, and no approval was obtained by the finance ministry, according to the relevant officials. So the cabinet has taken the decision arbitrarily, emphasizing that it did not, however, mean that salary increments would not be done. He concluded that the allocation will have to be done. Done after looking at the financial situation, following the presenting of a budget, the government will have to take observations from the finance ministry whether the financial situation is favourable. Based on that, a decision will be taken moving forward. Sri Lanka's new government has abandoned plans to sell the debt-ridden nation airline, Sri Lankan Airlines, but will restructure it for a more profitable future.
The airline's new chairman, Sarat Ganegoda, said President Anur Kumar Desanayake has instructed that the airline should be an institution that all Sri Lankans are proud of and should be owned by Sri Lankans. The previous government had invited bids to part sell and manage the airline that has been suffering accumulated losses over the years. While the airline has reported an operating profit from the period April 2022 to the end of March of 2023, its accumulated debt is $1.2 billion. Under the earlier plan, the government was to retain 51% control of the airline while selling off the remaining remaining 49% to investors. Six parties, some of whom had no experience in running an airline, responded with an initial call for interest, but none were pre-qualified for the next step of the process. Ganegoda said the airline is an important pillar of tourism and responsible for 50% of the tourist traffic into the country. Sri Lanka aims to reach 2.3 million arrivals this year with a target of 3 million tourists next year and 5 million by 2030. He said, while the sale of the airline has been stopped, there are plans to restructure the airline under a viable business model. Some restructuring of operations is needed to strengthen the balance sheet of the company. Making a historic landmark in the Sri Lankan leisure industry, tourist arrivals up to the 13th of October, which were totaled 1,540,161, totally surpassed the total number of visitors for 2023, which was 1,487,303. With 55,353 numbers recorded from the 1st to the 13th of October 2024 and averaging around 4,000 arrivals per day, the monthly arrival figure is also expected to be better than the 2023 monthly October figure of 109,199 by the third week of this month. The top source destination for the local leisure sector remained as India, which had 16,163 arrivals so far in the month of October, accounting to 29.2% of the total market share. To date, three 2,719 Indian travellers had visited Sri Lanka and with Jaffna having two daily flights from Air India and Indigo and the ferry service resuming this number is expected to increase further. China moved up and remained as the second top destination for tourism with 3,963 arrivals while the United Kingdom 3,926, Germany 3,469, Australia 2,891 and Russian Federation 2,729 followed. Many tourism related stakeholders opined that with the peaceful manner in which the presidential election was held, they expect a slimmer outcome for the general election as well. This in turn will not dampen the arrival patterns and Sri Lanka will achieve the best arrival figure in its tourism history by the end of 2024, surpassing the all-time best of 2,333,796 achieved in 2018. Mangala Vijay Singha, Chief Operating Officer of Brown & Company PLC, has been appointed as the new Chairman of the Export Development Board of Sri Lanka. With over 25 years of senior and top management experience across various sectors, including pharmaceuticals, chemicals, consumer and electronics, industrial engineering solutions and mobile and telecommunications, Vijay Singha is a prominent leader in the Sri Lankan corporate world. He successfully manages a portfolio of international suppliers with well known brands across various industries, driving operational efficiency and business growth. From 2021 to 2023, Vijay Singh has served as the president of the Veterinary Importers and Manufacturers Association, where his leadership played a pivotal role in advancing industry standards. Let's take a short commercial break. Market updates on the other side. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. The instability of the Colombo bourses seen at the beginning of the week are seemingly settling as there are some optimistic sentiments at closing today. Both the SPI and the S&P SL20 ended the day in the green at market close, signifying a stronger outlook for continued positive closes at the bourses as the weekend nears. For more on today's trading sessions, we have with us Manoj Shakandanarachi from First Capital Securities. Thank you. The broad market experienced another day of market volatility as investors continued the sluggish stance during the day. In the morning hours, the market exhibited subdued sentiment, but the market began to recover by midday, fueled by renewed interest in the hotel sector counters. 
Additionally, selected plantation sector stocks such as Muscalia plantations and Agarapatana plantations attracted attention during the day compared to the previous day. Accordingly, the index closed the day in green at 12,290, gaining 33 points. Dialogue, Aiken Spence, Deep Products, Royal Ceramics Lanka and Brown's Investments emerged as the top positive contributors to the index. The S&P SL20 index also rose by 6 points, closing at 3,614 for the day. Amidst the misparticipation from both retail and high net worth investors, turnover stood at LKR 1.8 billion, marking a 18% decrease from the monthly average. The capital goods sector led the turnover at 16%, followed by telecommunication services and material sectors jointly contributing 28% of the overall turnover. The top gainers for the day were UB Finance, Muscalia Plantations, Cargo Boat Development Company, Digital Mobility Solutions Lanka and Hill Property. Meanwhile, the top losers for the day were Nation Lanka Finance, Blue Diamonds Non-Voting, ASPH, Abans Finance and Lanka Telecom. The Purchasing Managers Index for September 2024 has shown growth in manufacturing and service activities. For analysis, we have with us Zaima Jihan from First Capital Holdings. Uh, for the month of September, Sri Lanka's uh, Purchasing Managers Index recorded expansions in index values of both the manufacturing and uh, service, sec uh, service sectors, but at a slower rate. Uh, the PMI for manufacturing recorded an index value of uh, 54.1 remaining above the uh, neutral threshold. Uh, so within the sub-indices, new orders and productions uh, saw expansion led by manufacturing of uh, food and beverage sector. Uh, also, stock of purchases increased uh, during the month uh, because businesses accumulated inventory ahead of the upcoming festive season. Uh, however, employment remained contracted while uh, suppliers' delivery time uh, continued to lengthen during the month. Uh, expectations for manufacturing activities over the next three months uh, remain positive, primarily due to the optimistic outlook on the year-end uh, seasonal demand. On the other hand, uh, PMI for services was recorded at 53.4 in September, uh, expanding at a slower rate again, similar to the manufacturing sector. Uh, in September, business activities grew across key sectors, with financial services leading the expansion uh, due to favourable interest rates, uh, which also boosted lending. Other sectors, including education, professional services, real estate and transportation also saw growth. Uh, however, activities in wholesale and retail trade, IT programming and uh, telecommunications remained unchanged, while uh, declines occurred in other sectors. Additionally, new businesses increased, particularly in financial services. Uh, so looking ahead, Expectations for business activities remain positive for the next three months, supported by the favourable macroeconomic conditions. Gold prices steadied close to record highs in Asian trade on Wednesday, recouping some recent losses as traders maintain bets that Federal Reserve will cut interest rates further. Spot gold rose 0.2% to $2,667.72 an ounce, while gold futures expiring in December rose 0.2% to $2,830 an ounce. The yellow metal had hit record highs in September, but has since remained rage bound in the low to mid $2,600 an ounce range as traders priced in a slower pace of rate cuts by the Fed. The dollar hit two-month highs on this notion, pressuring metal markets. But markets maintain bets that US rates will still come down gradually, presenting more upside for metals and other non-yielding assets. This kept gold close to recent peaks. Spot gold was largely rage-bound in the past three weeks, struggling to make new highs as markets priced in a higher terminal rate for the Fed. 
oil prices saw a slight increase in Asian trade today, stabilizing after significant losses over the past week. Brent oil futures for December rose 0.4% to $74.55 per barrel, while West Texas Intermediate crude futures also gained 0.4%, reaching $70.31 per barrel. The modest rebound follows a more than 4% decline in the previous session, driven by reports that Israel would not attack Iran's oil and nuclear facilities, easing fears of a major escalation in the Middle East. However, weak economic data from China, which showed a drop in oil imports for September, continues to weigh on market sentiment. Additionally, two major oil industry organizations recently lowered their demand outlooks, highlighting ongoing concerns about global oil demand. As these factors unfold, traders remain cautious about the market direction. The Sri Lankan rupee held steady against the US dollar in commercial banks today, compared to yesterday's rates. According to commercial bank, both the buying and selling rates, the US dollar have seen a slight decline. Now let's take a look at how the Sri Lankan rupee is firing against other global currencies. Let's take a short commercial break. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back. The Chamber of Young Lankan Entrepreneurs recently led a high-profile trade delegation to the Republic of Korea, marking a significant milestone for the Sri Lankan business industry. This visit, commemorating the Chamber's 25th anniversary, aims to strengthen economic ties and open up new business avenues between Sri Lanka and South Korea. Spearheaded by the Chairman of the COYLE, Tushara Raddala, and the Chairman of the Foreign Delegations and Overseas Business Promotion Subcommittee, Manusha Vira Ratna, the mission signifies a new era of collaboration between the two nations. COYLE inked important memorandums of understanding with two of the biggest business chambers in South Korea during the tour. One notable MOU was with the Chun Chun Chamber of Commerce, representing over 400 of Korea's top corporations. This partnership is expected to boost trade and investment in various sectors, bringing economic benefits to both countries. Additionally, the COYLE partnered with the IMA Chamber of Commerce, which represents over 150 small and medium-sized Korean enterprises operating globally. This agreement will pave the way for Sri Lankan SMEs to access international markets, fostering innovation and sustainable growth. A critical player in facilitating this partnership was a Sri Lankan embassy in South Korea who coordinated significant discussions between COYLE and the Global Business Alliance. These conversations further enhance the mission's objectives of expanding business relationships and exploring joint ventures. FEMS, Sri Lanka's leading feminine hygiene brand, has proudly launched FIO, the country's first trilingual period tracking app, on the 15th of October 2024. The app is designed to empower women by providing credible menstrual health education, cycle tracking and a safe space for personalised health advice. The groundbreaking app drives FEMS' mission to enable women to be independent and rise, breaking the taboo surrounding menstruation, promoting period support for women across the nation. FIO is designed to be a 100% free resource enabling users to track their menstrual cycles, access trustworthy menstrual education and engage in discussions with medical professionals. Breaking barriers, the app is available in Sinhala, Tamil and English, ensuring inclusivity and accessibility for all women in Sri Lanka. The FIO app was developed in response to questions received through the FEMS FIO WhatsApp chatbot, which generated 17,000 automated messages and facilitated individual chats within 40 days of its launch in August. August of last year. This revealed a critical gap in knowledge and awareness about menstrual health and indicated a strong need for personalized menstrual health support and indicated a strong need for personalized menstrual health support. 
The launched FIO app presents unique features including users being able to easily log their period dates to receive accurate predictions on their cycles and ovulation. Co-created with medical professionals, FIO ensures these predictions and the educational resources in the Insights section are medically sound and offer valuable coping strategies. Additionally, the app features an Ask a Doctor function for personalized health advice, a community section for sharing experiences and seeking comfort, reminders for important dates and stores for convenient ordering of sanitary products, all aimed at building a supportive and informed environment for users. FIO is more than a period tracker. It's a safe and knowledgeable community platform designed to support women at every stage of their menstrual health journey. FEMS has also partnered Ayubo Healthcare Solutions to connect users with access to verified medical professionals. AIA Insurance proudly announces the launch of AIA Save Smart, the smartest and highly customizable life insurance plan designed to meet diverse financial needs of Sri Lankans at every stage of life. Whether saving for a child's higher education or planning for a dream retirement, AIA Save Smart offers the most flexible and accessible solution tailored to individual savings goals. AIA Save Smart stands out as the smartest choice for anyone looking to secure their financial future. The plan can be uniquely tailored for the specific nature of the customer's savings requirements, providing unparalleled flexibility, from funding a child's education to building a health fund or planning for retirement. AIA Save Smart caters to the savings needs of different different generations, ensuring a comprehensive solution that grows with you. In addition to its investment benefits, AIA Save Smart offers a wide range of optional benefits that customers can choose based on their protection and health needs. These additional benefits enhance the overall value of the plan, ensuring that all individuals' unique requirements are met with the highest level of care and attention. AIA Save Smart goes beyond being just a savings plan and it's enriched with a holistic ecosystem of well-being solutions designed to improve quality of life. With a focus on health, wellness and financial security, AIA Save Smart empowers Sri Lankans to live healthier, longer and better lives. Dialog Axiat PLC Sri Lanka's leading connectivity provider has published its 16th annual sustainability report detailing the company's environmental, social and governance performance for the financial year from the 1st of January 2023 to the 31st of December 2023. This report underscores Dialog's commitment to sustainability and transparency, providing stakeholders with key insights to its initiatives and achievements. Dialog became the first company in South Asia to comply with the SLFRS S1 and S2 standards in 2023. These localized standards, based on the International Financial Reporting Standards for Sustainability Disclosures, set benchmarks for corporate transparency in Sri Lanka. SLFRS S1 defines the general requirements for sustainability-related financial disclosures, while S2 mandates climate-specific reporting, aligning with the global best practices to enhance accountability in corporate sustainability reporting. Since 2010, Dialog has maintained continuous certification by the Global Reporting Initiative and became the first telecommunications provider in South Asia to comply with the Sustainability Accounting Standards Board and Global System for Mobile Communication Association reporting standards. Dialog's leadership in transparency was further acknowledged when it ranked first in the 2023 Transparency in Corporate Reporting Assessment by Transparency International Sri Lanka. Going in for a short commercial break now, we'll be right back with Global Updates. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. Most Asian stocks fell today driven down by a disappointing outlook from industry leader ASML, which heavily impacted technology shares, particularly chip makers. The cooling optimism surrounding potential Chinese stimulus measures added to the downward pressure, with Chinese markets extending significant losses from the previous session. Regional markets also faced a weak lead in from Wall Street, where major ship making stocks dragged US benchmarks down from record highs. Meanwhile, US stock index futures remained steady in Asian trade as investors turned their attention to upcoming third quarter earnings report. 
Tech heavy indexes in Asia were among the worst performers, reflecting the challenges faced by the semiconductor sector amid a softening market outlook. Japan's Nikkei 225 index slid 1.9 percent, weighed by 13 percent fall in Laser Tech Corp, and a 10 percent drop in Tokyo Electron Limited. While South Korea's Kospi shed 0.7 percent on losses in SK Hynix Incorporated and Samsung Electronics Limited. <laughs> Wall Street's major stock indexes closed lower, with a 1% drop in the technology-heavy Nasdaq, leading closes as chip stocks tumbled on demand concerns, while the energy sector fell 3% as oil prices dropped. Wall Street's main indexes closed lower on Tuesday as chip stocks tumbled and the energy sector slid along with oil prices. The Dow and S&P 500 each shed three-quarters of a percent, and the Nasdaq dropped 1%. The energy index finished down 3 percent for its biggest one-day percentage decline since early October 2023 as crude prices fell on weaker demand expectations. Still, in other movers, chip equipment maker ASML Holdings' U.S.-listed shares tumbled 16 percent after reporting downbeat expectations for 2025 sales. That helped drag down the Philadelphia Semiconductor Index 5.3 percent for its biggest one-day drop since early September. And fresh from a record high close on Monday, shares of NVIDIA fell more than 4.5 percent after a media report said the Biden administration is considering capping AI chip exports by U.S. companies. Switching to retail, Shares of Walgreens Boots Alliance rallied nearly 16 percent after the pharmacy company narrowly beat Wall Street's lowered estimates for fourth-quarter adjusted profit and announced plans to shut 1,200 stores to cut costs. Struggling with the production and regulatory crisis, Boeing has announced plans to raise up to $25 billion through stock and debt offerings and $10 billion credit agreement with major lenders. Boeing sought to shore up its sagging finances on Tuesday as a bitter worker strike entered its second month. The plane maker announced plans to raise up to $25 billion through stock and debt offerings and a $10 billion credit agreement with major lenders. Boeing is grappling with a slump in production of its best-selling 737 MAX jet following a mid-air door panel blowout earlier this year and a prolonged strike by thousands of union factory workers. The strike is costing the company more than $1 billion a month, according to one estimate. Boeing announced it would cut 17,000 jobs, or 10 percent of its workforce, with 60-day notices going out as soon as next month, according to a source. It was not clear when and how much the plane maker would eventually raise through the offering, but analysts estimate $10 billion to $15 billion is needed for Boeing to be able to maintain its credit ratings, which are now just one notch above junk. Emirates Airlines President Tim Clark this week became the first senior industry figure to articulate fears over Boeing's ability to tackle its worst-ever financial crisis, telling a trade publication there could be a bankruptcy filing in Boeing's future. Meanwhile, U.S. Acting Labor Secretary Julie Su met with Boeing and the International Association of Machinists and Aerospace Workers in Seattle on Monday in a bid to break the strike deadlock. And that's all from us here at the Nightly Business Report. Join us again on Monday for key updates across the business globe. I am Sunny Mudanayaka. Thank you for watching. Good night.